Hey, what's happening guys? Today I just want to take a couple minutes and talk about the evolution and the differences in what I would call the old school Arduinos and the new school. So, these are clones, but they're the basic Arduino Uno R3s that we all know and love that use, you know, the Atmel Atmega 328P processor. You know, these have been out since the, what? Early 2010, somewhere in that area. Fantastic. Not much jump in tech. Uh, a few years later, I mean, what do we go? We changed uh, we changed our USB interface to a CH340. And we went from the DIP 328P to, you know, quad flat pack. You know, clock speed's still the same. Everything's still the same. Nothing. I mean, you take a look at these boards. They're pretty much... Identical copies of each other. But then last year, something did change. These are the R4 boards. This is the R4 Wi-Fi, which is basically two, two, two processors in one. You have the uh, RA4M1 ARM uh, processor here that is the new standard for the Arduinos. And then you also get a bonus uh, ESP32-S3 Mini one. Now this board is pretty much the same internally and whatnot, but it is lacking the Wi-Fi. This one is called the Minima. It's also glaringly lacking the uh, LED matrix, but that's not important right now. So these boards are physically, you know, the same. They fit in the same <clears throat> slots and everything. At least they're supposed to. This one looks to be a different size. No, there we go. They lined up. <clears throat> that is so that they are physically hardware compatible with all your Arduino shields, whether it's a motor shield or um, yeah, Ethernet shield. You know, diff different types of shields that you put on there. They will fit on the new R4. And you can program the new R4s in the latest Arduino IDE and going as far back as 1.8.6, which is as far back as I have to try it on. And I know they work just fine there. But, there had to be a button there, didn't there? The but is, this ain't an AT328P. This is an ARM processor. These are not the same. So while the Arduino IDE has no trouble converting your, you know, C++ type code that the uh, R4 can understand, when you get into the libraries, things now are going to get tricky because those libraries are probably referring to the AT328P, not the RA4, RA4M1. So that can be a an issue. Now, what I expect to happen is that people who write a lot of libraries, like, you know, Lady Ada, for instance, is probably going to come out and update all her libraries. So it's just something to be aware of. I created a little spreadsheet to show you the differences in the two. Let's go take a look at that real fast. Okay, so this is just a little uh, spreadsheet I made up to compare some of the basic features. I figure we'd go over it real quick. So in the, R, the the original Uno R3, you know the chip was always the Atmega 328P and 8-bit microcontroller. Now with the next two chips, we've moved up to the Renaissance RA4M1, which is an M4 uh, ARM Cortex, much more powerful processor. The original Uno R3 and the Minima lack a uh, coprocessor. They have it listed on the Uno R4 as radio. I mean, that's what they're using it for, really, is, you know, for the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi. But, honestly, it's a microprocessor in and of itself. And that is the ESP32-S3, which has 384 kilobytes of ROM and 512 kilobytes of SRAM. Now, the clock speed on the original Arduino is 16 megahertz. They bumped it up in both the new boards to 48 megahertz. Uh, the ESP32 is, what, a couple hundred megahertz, so, you know, that's in there as well. 
SRAM, we've went from two kilobytes of SRAM in the R3 to 32 kilobytes in the R4s. Flash 32 in the R3 up to 256K. So you can see by switching to this Renaissance M4 chip, they have really increased the memory that's available to you there. So where you had to scrimp and save to uh, make sure your variables weren't eating up any more memory than is necessary, and that is a good programming practice, and you should do it anyway, you can get away with a little bit more here. The original had an EEPROM. Uh, the M4s don't have an EEPROM, but I believe there's an EEPROM in the uh, ESP32 if you really needed one. Also, I didn't put it in here, but the original Uno R3 lacks a... Uh, an available op amp that you can get in the uh, Uno R4 Minima and the R4 Wi-Fi. Those are both built into the microprocessor, but brought out through pins on the board, which is really nice. So our operating voltage remains at 5 volts, although keep in mind if you have the uh, Wi-Fi version, the ESP32 is a 3.3 volt. Just as long as you don't add anything directly to the ESP32, the Arduino board will take care of everything else for you. Input voltage on the original Arduino is 7 to 20 volts. At 20 volts, it's going to buck a lot of heat. So you, I generally try and keep it around 12 volts. And then with the new ones, we go 6 to 24. Again, same thing. Keep it closer to 12 volts if you can. It, it will accept up to 24 volts, but man, you're, you're very inefficient. Now, the max current per pin on that old Atmega 328P was 20 milliamps a pin, which is great. Because 20 milliamps is pretty much the maximum you want to drive an LED at. So it's like they were made for each other, right? Well, now we've dropped down to 8 milliamps. And you know what? That's not a bad thing. And it's not going to be a problem. Um, let, me, let me put up a little, make a little demonstration. I'll show you. A red LED at 20 milliamps and a red LED at 8 milliamps, if I actually remember to do this. All right, so there are two red LEDs. This one is drawing about 8 milliamps, and the first other one is drawing, I think, about 23. But you can't tell the difference with the lights on. Maybe you can tell a slight bit of difference with the lights off. And here, I'll just show you. Try and get everything in here. Yeah, so that one's nine milliamps. And then this one over here, like I said, is about 23. That was as close as I could get with the resistor values I had. Yeah, 24. But as you can see when looking at it, it it's not an issue. They look pretty much the same after I'm recording this. All right, so our digital pins, we have 16 on the R3. They knocked it down to 14 on the uh, R4s, but... They've more than made up for it, so you're, you're not going to miss that. And if you need it, you can get that new Arduino Giga that has plenty of pins. They all retain their six PWM pins and analog um, pins as well as six of those. Now, the ADC in the original Arduino was 10-bit. The ADC in the R4s is set in the software at 12 bits, but it can be up to 14 bits. So I'm going to put 14-bit on here. The original uh, R3 did not have a DAC. Both R4s do have a DAC. That is a digital to analog converter. The only way you can get changing voltages out of the R3, which is a strictly digital device, is to use PWM, which approximates it by turning it, turning the voltage on and off fast enough so that it averages out to the voltage you want. Say, say you want two and a half volts. Well, you get 5 volts at a 50% duty cycle, that's going to average out to 2.5 volts. It works well for most things, not for audio, though. So if you want to do some audio, you're going to need an op amp, you're going to need a DAC. The uh, R4s have it. They have a 12-bit 
uh, DAX built into them. Real-time clock, not on the R3. Yes, on the R4s. Now, one thing to note is the R4 minima that I have, which is not from Arduino. It is a pre-production prototype I'm testing for Elegoo. Does not have the uh, real-time clock pins, or at least I didn't see them. So, that could be a problem. They each have one UART. If you need more UARTs, again, go to the Giga. CAN bus, the original doesn't. The R4s do have CAN buses. I2C, they all have I2C. And only the Wi-Fi, the R4 Wi-Fi has an LED matrix. Are you missing anything with it? No, I don't really think so. And then we have our uh, USB types. The original has that big old Type B, which I also call a USB printer plug. The new ones have Type C, which is very nice. So I'll try and remember to put a link to that spreadsheet down below. But uh, the, the key things to take from this, let me let me swap these around here so we have the old ones over here and the new ones here. The key things to take away from it is you're getting a three times increase in clock speed from 16K to... Uh, 48k and you're getting an eight times increase in memory from uh was it 32 to 256 kilobytes they program exactly the same you're getting more memory more speed so they're going to be more efficient i mean is this taking you up in the raspberry pi territory nah not really i mean yeah you you could run you know micro python on these i'm sure you could probably find a version of Linux that would run on them as well. But you're really lacking in the auxiliary pro, yeah, uh, hardware that you would need to really take truly advantage of that. There's no way to generate an HDMI signal off of one of these. I mean, you could probably get a VGA signal, but ooh, you'd be better off just buying a Pi. So I look at it like this. Think of these, the original R3 boards... It's like a Commodore 64. Just the pinnacle of 8-bit computing. And then you could take the Raspberry Pis, put the Pis over here, and think of them more along the lines of a Macintosh. What we've got kind of stuck here in the middle? The Amiga. A big jump from this to this. And you can't get from here to here Without me, they actually they did, but never mind. It's a big jump, is I guess is what I'm saying. It's a big jump in tech. Prices remain pretty much the same um, for an actual Arduino board made by Arduino, designed and assembled in Italy. And you'll be able to tell it by the uh, golden infinity symbol on this jumper here. Running between twenty and thirty dollars, depending on where and what day you buy them. Um, this guy, if you bought an actual Arduino, like I said, about twenty dollars. Knockoffs, about five dollars. So, like I said, there's an actual Arduino. This is a clone. This is a prototype. I'm not even sure it's available yet. I'm just doing some research for him. But yeah, the prices remain the same. You've got a you've got an increase in speed, you've got an increase in memory, but you are going to lose some compatibility. So if I mean if you're sitting on a bunch of shields and stuff for your Arduino Uno R3s, I would say stick with them. If not, try the new ones. You learn something new. Could be fun. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.